Okay, I think we're about ready, and I think it's right at 6 o'clock, so let me call the meeting to order. Call the roll. Ross? Here. White? Here. Harris? Robinson? Here. Baxter? Here. Harris? Here. Height? Here. And Witcher? Present. Quorum is present. Thank you very much. I invite you to rise as I say the prayer and pledge today. <clears throat> Our dearest and most precious Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the opportunity to meet here tonight as free men and free women. Please bless our employees, 850 strong, as they have a very difficult job, a very hard job, and a very dangerous job to protect and serve us. Thank you for all the many wonderful things you've given our city. Bless us that we have the knowledge to make good decisions for our city. In your precious name we pray, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So moved. Second. Thank on a motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go, uh, only showing one communication. I'm going to actually add some to that, but uh, uh, officially. Uh, there was a number two added after the agenda. Okay, what was it? It is a letter from Miss, uh, an email from Miss Joyce Brewer regarding the recycling price rise. We sh council members should have a copy at their station. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to accept? Anybody want to pull anyone? Uh, number one. You're going to pull number one? Okay. Well, let's just take them individually. Um, read number one. You want it by title? Just by title, and I'd like Mr. Carter just to kind of give us a brief overview. Uh, Jason Carter, Attorney at Law, Memorandum regarding Risk Management Committee Quarterly Report, Quarter 2, Fiscal Year 18. All right. Council. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Member of City Council. Uh, the, uh, this is a Risk Management uh, Committee report from the second quarter of this year. It uh, narrates our transactions that uh, we entered into, which uh, our power purchases we uh, made for a total of uh, approximately $1.7 million that purchased about 60,000 megawatt hours for both the summer uh, of 2018 and the summer of 19. Uh, I'd say the only uh, real noticeable transactions that we had uh, during the second quarter was there was a lot of uh, financial transmission rights uh, activity uh, going into uh, uh, the, uh, the different auctions that are held by MISO. Uh, and as you can see, uh, kind of totals out on the third page of the report, we actually generated revenue for the city uh, of a total of $26,468 uh, through uh, FTR transactions. So uh, we were able to both manage risk and produce revenue out of that, which I think is uh, uh, always the, the, uh, the goal that we'd like to uh, have. Uh, in addition, I'd say at the bottom of my report, it doesn't uh, note any recommendations uh, for changes, but uh, you should uh, expect some recommendations forthcoming from the Risk Management Committee. I'd say in the, in the past few months, uh, you know, the committee's done a lot of thought about the processes and the rhythm of our <coughs> meetings and, and how we can uh, uh, best take advantage of minor fluctuations in the market. Uh, Danny Bradley did a lot of analysis on that. Uh, Scott Sp Springer's been working with his staff to increase uh, communication with our power manager. And, uh, and I think that we've got some really good ideas that are going to help us take advantage of even small fluctuations in the market in the coming future. And you should expect those changes next month. Uh, so subject to your questions, that would be uh, my summary. On the motion. Uh, do we have a motion? We need Move to one. accept the file. Thank you. Thank you. On the motion, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Uh, communication number two, how about a motion to accept and file? So moved. Second. 
On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Thank you very much. I uh, just passed out a letter from me to, um, to all of y'all um, that I'm really excited about. Didn't get a chance to get in communication. I'm gonna ask Caitlin to, uh, to read the entire letter. Honorable members of the North Little Rock City Council, almost a month ago, I reviewed a letter from Mr. George Aya, Director of the Region 6 e Economic Development and Administration Office, stating that our grant for public infrastructure improvements to accommodate and facilitate the job expansion associated with the first Orion Corporate Headquarters, the 600 Main Building, and future Argenta developments had been approved by his office. I wanted to make a public announcement at that upcoming council meeting. However, Todd Larson, our development director, advised me to wait until we heard what the Washington DC office also, also approved it. Last Thursday, we received notification that our grant request for $869,964 was approved by the Washington office. It will pay for half of the more than $1.7 million public improvements, including construction and extension of sixth street and sidewalks with sidewalks and drainage, installation of water and sewer lines, as well as street lights, the construction of more than 100 public parking spaces in the city owned uh, on the city on land at the northeast corner of the new 6th Street and Magnolia. I want to thank Todd, who had the idea to apply for this grant, for leading the team that worked on this grant application, including Chris Wilburn, city engineer, Amy Smith, assistant director for procurement, Robert Birch, special assistant to the mayor, Rodney Larson and Kanya Spencer, our friends in Central Arkansas Planning and Development District, and our private sector partners, Thomas Ponwall of Thomas Engineering and Alan New of Taggart Architects. Also, the team received guidance and assistance from Mr. Aya's people at EDA, who helped us meet the tight timetables for, uh, for getting approval before the end of the federal fiscal year on September 30th. Congratulations to all. Best regards, uh, Mayor Joe Smith. Move, accept, and file. Second. The, uh, before we vote on that, I just want to make a few comments that uh, uh, this was a, uh, a team effort, no doubt, led by Todd. And Todd, you did a great job of, of putting this together and, and uh, helping us to achieve this. This is a huge, this is huge. It's almost $900,000 that we're not going to have to spend uh, out of our money now to, uh, to create this corridor uh, on 6th Street. So, you know, this is the reason that we invest in, in economic development and economic development executives so that we can go after and find these things that uh, uh, on our normal day-to-days we wouldn't know. So, Todd, good job. Thank you. Robert, Chris, Amy's at home. Um, uh, Amy worked many hours and weekends, I think, to get this thing all put together. So she's a doll, no doubt. So anyway, I wanted to say thank you for everybody, and, and uh, we'll we're going to take that money and make a really special place down there. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. The, uh, I've got another one. Um, I'm not going to go to it. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we, we take four and pass it that way. Uh, we had, you know, of course, we had really bad weather all weekend, and we had some power outages. And so Scott put together um, a few little notes so that we'll know in case y'all get asked that uh, Friday evening we had a power outage uh, in Dixie. And believe it or not, uh, it was caused by a flock of 70 to 80 birds that, that flew through uh, uh, some of our circuits down there and uh, uh, took that out. Saturday morning at 4.20 in the morning, um, we, we lost um, um, a main line jumper feed, which was uh, in the Indian Hills area. Uh, none of these were out for a long time, but even if it's more than 10 minutes, it's not happy. Sunday morning, uh, you know, which affected downtown was a raccoon, which is the second time a raccoon's gotten into that substation. We don't know why, but we're gonna try to stop that from happening again. Um, but we were able to get up. I know I talked to Brother Paul, and, and uh, we got them on in time for him to have church service on on Sunday morning. So 
Um, I wanted everybody to know that these were isolated incidents. We don't like them when they happen, but uh, you know, if it didn't rain and wind didn't blow and, and there wasn't animals running around, we would never have a power outage. But uh, uh, Scott and his people were on top of it and we got most everybody up fairly quickly. So thank you, Scott. I want everybody to be able to know that in case you got a phone call. And uh, I also uh, passed out an interesting article, uh, and I certainly won't read it. It's, it's about eight or 10 pages long on the conflict of interest and, and uh, what's killing recycling. I, I found it very interesting. It answered some of our questions that we've had. Uh, so that'll be for your casual reading. So with that, that'll take care of all those. Um, okay. Uh, I think we're going to go into presentations now, and uh, I'm going to ask our fire marshal, uh, Chief Flaster, to come up, and uh, uh, we've got a really special opportunity here. Chief? This is Mr. Geronda Bryant, and uh, I'll go ahead and read... Uh, uh, what I wrote here. On September 3rd, 2018 at 9.49 p.m., North Little Rock Fire and Rescue Units responded to a structure fire at 2206 Village Drive. Upon arrival, fire units reported that the mobile home was heavily involved with fire. Prior to the fire department's arrival, Deronda Bryant, who was visiting relatives near the scene, saw smoke in the area and went to investigate. As he approached the mobile home, he saw smoke and flames coming from the front door. A majority of the mobile home was heavily involved in fire. He then heard faint calls for help. He observed the victim lying in the doorway, badly burned. Despite the intense heat and smoke and risking great harm to himself, Mr. Bryant pulled the victim from the structure, dragging him to a safe distance. Mr. Bryant then instructed bystanders to call 911 as he tended to the victim. Mr. Bryant's actions before the arrival of first responders demonstrate his heroism, a selfless act to save the life of another human being. For this reason, the city of North Little Rock would like to recognize Mr. Bryant for his bravery and thank him for his life-saving efforts. I also have a uh, challenge coin, a department challenge coin that I'd like to present, uh, Deronda. Thank you, buddy. It's certainly my pleasure, too, Mr. Bryant, to uh, uh, give you the certificate of appreciation from the city and from my office and, and uh, the, your bravery that you did on September the 3rd. So congratulations so much. Yes, uh, we need more people in our world just like you. Thank you very yes, much. Thank you. Let's get a picture real quick. Okay, um, let's go into, I think we have some people signed up to talk about legislation. Uh, we have three. Uh, Delenn Hearn wants to talk about 18186. Delenn? Yeah, there you are. Three minutes, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Delenn Hearn. I live in Park Hill, and um, thank you for letting me speak to this issue. It's the recycling issue. Uh, the last time I showed up to speak to the City Council, it was to encourage instituting a program for curbside recycling. It's important to me. Um, my key word tonight is effective. I want what we do to be effective. Uh, North Rock had enthusiastic participation when the curbside recycling program got started. People were shocked by the number of people that participated and who wanted to be involved and wanted to do it right. Um, 
We're told now that there's a contamination problem is what I'm, I'm finding out. Um, I think that's due to lack of education because so many people wanted to do it and do it right. I don't think that we've had that big a change in population of people who wanted to do recycling in North Little Rock. Um, <laughs> just a little side note, uh, I hope waste management is not calling it contamination when the price has gone down on something and they just don't want to recycle it. Uh, but I think if the education is effective, then there wouldn't be the, the contamination problem. Um, I've got in my hand the last mail I received at my house. I put it on my refrigerator because I wanted to do recycling correctly. It is addressed to my husband who died two and a half years ago. Uh, his name was never on the title to my house and never on any of the utilities, so I don't know why they addressed it to him. But at any rate, there's 16 bulleted items on here, and I think I marked down that three say what items should go in that bin. They don't give any details like what number of plastic can go in there or anything like that. Um, online, I spent about 15 minutes down at Argenta Library before I came to this meeting, and I Googled how to recycle in North Little Rock. I got nothing. There was no list of what could be put. I think that would be important to know in how to recycle in North Little Rock. It suggested going to North Little Rock Recycling Program. It got me a link to the city. That got me a link to the regional recycling, and I did finally get a list. It was three to four clicks in, and if you've looked at anything about marketing online, you know two or three clicks is the maximum before people are going to give up. Uh, if when I searched waste management, which is the name on my recycling bin, it seems obvious to me that's where I would go for information. I got nothing. When I finally got recycling guidelines, they ended up being for Phoenix, Arizona. That's not effective. Um, I looked up, and I'm sure somebody will correct me, but I think there's about 26,500 households in North Little Rock. Not all of those have curbside recycling. Some of them are apartments, but let's go with that number. It looks to me like those residents want a list. They want a list. That's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm hearing. That's not hard. That's not expensive. Just because you spend $150,000 on what you call education doesn't mean it's effective. People want something they can refer back to on a list. I have a list for my business. It didn't cost me that much. It cost me $175 for 4,000 copies, front and back. Um, and that's without a bulk discount like this. So I think waste management is not being effective in their education. The contract is for recycling. If they're not recycling, why are we paying them? They haven't completed their reports. We don't know what or how much is getting recycled. We don't know if it's effective. Uh, what I'm going to suggest, and by the way, they're saying if it's contaminated, it gets dumped in the landfill. Well, we're paying for recycling, and that's more expensive than dumping it in the landfill that they own. So my suggestion would be, if they get the contract, you know, being cheap doesn't mean they're doing the job. If they get the contract, let's put some penalties in there for not completing those reports. Let's put some penalties in there for not doing a certain percentage of the available materials and put some rewards in there if they make higher than their goals. That's the way contracts have always worked as far as I know. If we want them to do what we've hired them to do, let's make it worth their while to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bull, Muhammad, not, I see what you're going to talk about, and we'll have a public hearing especially for that property, so you'll be able to come up at that point in time right before we call that legislation, okay? All right, next uh, is uh, Joyce Williams. Good evening. I'm Joyce Williams. I live in Ward 4, uh, Mr. Height, and Mr. Witcher's Ward, and I talked to Mr. Height um, a week or two ago about the uh, recycling. My issue is 
I don't mind paying to recycle, but um, if we're constantly being told that we're not doing it right and they're throwing it all in the in the, the dump and we're also paying for that, I don't see where the benefit to curbside recycling is. Before we went to curbside recycling, there were bins in various parking lots and, and we did it for free as far as I know. I know those places sometimes got messy, but to me, we're doing waste management's work for them and then we're being told they're not doing it good enough and we're gonna raise the price, and they're gonna raise the prices to us. So I don't know what the uh, alternative is, but I kind of think that maybe we need to look at that. Uh, what's the cost of North Little Rock and what benefit are we getting out of it? If it's more expensive to recycle than it is to put all this stuff into the dump, I know that's not green, but uh, I think in the future, they could raise the prices year after, I mean, I know this is a seven year contract, is it? I, but they could raise the prices year after year, you know, or contract after contract and we wouldn't solve anything. So I think it kind of needs to be looked at what the cost benefit is of recycling. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that, that concludes um, public comments on legislation. So let's go right on into uh, legislation. Okay, R18184, Mayor Smith. Please call it. A resolution declaring certain city owned items and other equipment as surplus providing an uh, for auction therefore, thereof. Move for adoption. Second. On a motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18185, Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution accepting a FEMA grant for $180,773 under the fiscal year 2017 assistance to firefighters grant program to fund and purchase physicals and cancer screenings for firefighters automated external defibrillators, cardiac monitors, and respirator fit testing equipment, appropriating the city's local share from Act 833 funds. So option. We got a motion and a second on a motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18186, Mayor Smith. Please call it. A resolution approving the proposal of Waste Management of Arkansas Incorporated to renew contract for residential recycling curbside pickup services, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into an agreement between the Regional Recycling and Waste Reduction District, City of North Little Rock, City of Little Rock, City of Sherwood, and Waste Management of Arkansas Incorporated for residential recycling curbside pickup services. Move for adoption. Second. Okay, uh, we're going to have an amendment, and uh, but let me let me monologue just for a little bit. As y'all all know, I've spent uh, hours, if not days, working and negotiating on contracts and trying to be, become the most knowledgeable recycler uh, in the in the world. And uh, some of the comments that we heard earlier, they were all uh, we've talked about everything that each one of you said. Uh, so we have hashed and rehashed on what what we've done wrong in the past seven years and what we can do right. You know, at the last council meeting, I was leaning towards uh, uh, ending that contract. And then I really got down and got to dealing with the numbers and trying to, to make sense of the numbers. And when I did, um, you know, waste management is recycling a tremendous amount of, of our waste. Uh, Sure, 31% of it is contaminated and is going to uh, the landfill, but that other 67% is a very, very large number. Uh, the total amount, and these are all estimates because I, I took a month and, and, uh, and put it all together uh, to come up with my yearly numbers, but uh, they're actually picking up uh, and diverting uh, 2,000 tons uh, away from our landfill that that we're using. And uh, two thirds of that is actually being uh, recycled, uh, which, you know, is, uh, it's 200, if, if we didn't do this, it would be 200 of our garbage trucks full compressed of 22,000 pounds, which is about a year and a half worth 
I mean, a month and a half worth of, uh, uh, of garbage that would, uh, we would have to, you know, that saves us from going into our landfill. So these numbers are, are awfully large. And when you start looking at that, and, and then I said, okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna do our own. We're gonna do double stream, dual stream like Fayetteville's got. And I've spent hours on the phone with, with their mayor in Fayetteville and uh, found out just how hard it is, just how expensive it is. And we could never do what they're doing up there for uh, the amount that waste management is gonna do single stream. Plus, the really big kicker on that was that single stream creates uh, three times as much uh, recycling as dual stream does. So if we were gonna do a dual stream program and it, it did 500 tons, uh, single stream is gonna generate 1,500 tons. So when you start looking at all those numbers and then I'm comparing uh, new contracts for recy curbside recycling across the country and the $4.14 that waste management has made with us uh, and this contract extension is by far uh, lower than anything I've seen. So with that, um, I think that uh, I'm very confident in saying that we do have problems that we need to fix. We're gonna try to get better on our contamination. Uh, we're gonna use some of those, the monies that uh, Waste Management is gonna give us back. And we've talked amongst ourselves, all the mayors have talked about how we're gonna make it better, how we're gonna stop the contamination. And the reason that we want to stop the contamination now is to save money in the future. You know, if we can lower that contamination number, then in two years when it's time to renegotiate again, that number might even go down if we have better numbers. So I was prepared to sponsor this legislation and ask that, uh, that you approve this, this two-year extension. So uh, comments, questions, and amendment. Ms. Ross? No, I, just on the amendment. Okay, amendment. go ahead, state your amendment. <clears throat> this amendment is, I have an objection to voting on anything when I haven't seen the contract. I haven't read the contract, and that's what this amendment does. It says that the contract will come back to us when it's written, because, I mean, we're basically voting on suggestions. We're not voting on an actual contract. Right. And I've got, you know, I've got the original contract from 2014, and I just went through and highlighted a few things that we haven't followed through on. And I want to make sure to see if these things are in there. Do we need to put some teeth in there if these are not followed? You know, in the original, it refers five times to uh, waste management tagging bins. You know, that's not been done. There's, I mean, there's just numerous things that right. were well, never followed. I mean, if you'll notice well, <laughs> in, in the highlights, you know, I mean, we highlighted what's going to, the, the big things that are going to change. And one of them is the tagging of bins. Uh, all they're going to do is they're going to help us with our problematic <coughs> areas. Right. And we have three neighborhoods that are awful, mm -hmm. and everybody else is fine. And so we're going to concentrate on those three neighborhoods. You know, we're going to get five thousand dollars a month or up to. Uh, I can take. You know, give me five thousand dollars every three months, and I can fix a lot of that in those neighborhoods. And so we've talked about different ideas on things we're going to do. You know, it's it's easier and more effective for them. Uh, by the time that they start tagging everything, uh, you know, they can, they can uh, much cheaper uh, scrape the contamination to the side and take it to the landfill. And I understand that it makes sense to me. I understand that. And uh, so uh, what we're doing by trying to educate our, our customers is making sure that the future of, of the cost of recycling stays the same or goes down. And I mean, I'm a huge recycler. I am all for recycling. I'm, you know, I don't want to throw anything away. And I've heard from numerous people, and it's, you know, it's it's probably 50-50 that want to keep it, that don't use it, want it to go away. And I know that we've got to find something, but my objection is not seeing the actual contract. I don't want to put my name on something. That's fine. That I, I don't read. mind doing that. And that's what this amendment is: is that it won't be approved until it comes back to the city council. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the main thing that I want all of you to be aware of when you vote is that these, these highlighted items about the cost, you know, because we're gonna have to start working, those are the most important thing, of course, is the cost, uh, the, uh, the force majeure language in the contract, which I had no problems with, and, uh, and taking out plastic bags and glass. So 
beware of those because those aren't going to change in the contract. And, and if we want to try to put some teeth into a contract, I'll certainly love for you to sit around the table with us. Ms. Robinson. Since we aren't going to be recycling glass, so now we'll put our glass in the garbage. So is that going to be additional money at, uh, for the landfill? Sure. Certainly will. We, we pay by the, uh, by the pound at the landfill. So it's going to add to our poundage. Uh, all right, we got a motion to amend. We have a second. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion on the motion? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? <clears throat> yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. White? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Move for adoption is amended. Second. On the motion, Ross? No. White? No. Taylor? No. Robinson? Hold on just a second. What are we voting on? The mem I mean the, the resolution. resolution. You're, you're, we're voting on the resolution. As, as amended. As amended. Mm -hmm. And you voted no? Mm -hmm. and no, no. And you voted no, Ms. White? Yes. And Mr. Taylor, you voted no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Robinson? Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. The Mayor, vote is tied. Mayor okay. votes yes. Okay. It passes. Thank you very much. On to the next one. R18187, Mayor Smith. Okay, hold on a minute. Let me get my stacks set aside here. Uh, Counselor, will you do me a favor? I will. Um, I've, I've asked this once before, and I'd like for you to do a little bit more research on it. On these uh, uh, condemnations, you know, we, we've got <clears throat> two or three pages of them today. Yes. Twelve. I, I really think that we could have one public hearing and list all of these addresses at one time in a public hearing and keep us from calling 12 different public hearings. Please research that for me. I will do okay. that, Mayor. All right, let's call uh, 187. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located at 4604 Adkins Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, to constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing a period of time for the property owner to abate said nuisance. Move for adoption. Second. Call a public hearing. Anybody here to speak on 4604 Adkins? Seeing none, close the public hearing on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18188, Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located at 4904 Haywood Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas to constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing a period of time for the property owner to abate said nuisance. New for adoption. Take it. Call the public hearing. Anybody here to speak on 4904 Haywood? Seeing none, close the public hearing on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18189, Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located at 3324 Burks Avenue in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas to constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing a period of time for the property owner to abate said nuisance. So move. Second. Call the public hearing. Anybody here to speak on 3324 Burks? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor and the City Council member. I am absolutely confused on this particular situation. About a month of June, the court inspector came in and um, put a notice and asked me that the property needs to be um, needs to be fixed. So the property is owned by my daughter. She lives in Washington State. Uh, I went to the, uh, the particular permit office and requested them about the permit to uh, so I can we can build and finish the remodeling uh, on that structure. They asked me to get a power of attorney from my daughter because I was not on the listed as the owner of the property. 
So I got the power of attorney. When I got the power of attorney, they issued me a permit and gave me 12 months to go and to finish whatever it needs to be done to the property. The property is old. Um, before we bought the property, it was considered as a, a historical monument or something like that. So that was the reason that my daughter bought that. And at the same time, I was given uh, a ticket by the court inspector there. Uh, I went down to the office, and they asked me, and I told them that I managed that, uh, uh, that particular property. What is the problem? They said that uh, we have, um, uh, we need, something needs to be done to that property. And I said, of course, let me know whatever needs to be done. I will be able to, I will communicate to with my daughter and we will take care of it. Unfortunately, instead of doing that, they asked me that they're going to give a ticket and, and then we will take care of, and you need to go ahead and take care of it. The ticket became, Mr. Mayor, became a big problem and issue for me. I have never been badly embarrassed and treated so badly in the court the way the judge did because the way the things were probably presented to him and looked like that I was probably the worst or the bad person in this whole world. I have lived, we have a business place. I'm a respected man. I'm 68 years old. Not only that I am full uh, take care of my business, when financially there was issues and problem, I went down and applied and got a job. And when they gave me this ticket, I was telling them that I have just recently got a job with the Little Rock School Bus District. I'm only take care of that property I don't own. And they would not listen about that situation. I was still had to go to the court and take time off from, from that particular place. And then the judge tells me to finish that property in three months. Now, city tells me to finish it in one year. The judge says, in three or four months, if you don't do it, I'm going to charge $500 a day. Then at the same time, if I try to explain that I now have a power of attorney, that place does not uh, belong to me. I'm, I mean, I'm not the owner of that property. But the only way I could do something was to have the power of attorney from my daughter first. So I'm so confused, uh, I mean, do I need to listen what the city says that I need to do in that 12 months? Or I listen to the judge who says it needs to be done within three months? I don't know. Your well, I, I mean, it's, this is a public comment section. I certainly don't want to get in a question and answer right now. Uh, you know, our code enforcement directors here would be more than happy to talk to you. But bottom line is, uh, there's a tremendous amount of these houses that, that we condemn. I've seen your house. Mm -hmm. um, it's awful. I, I agree. I've, I've seen, and it's been that way for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I feel certain and I hope that the city council will vote tonight to condemn it. And then at that point in time, we have a process that if you and, and your daughter want to go through that process, uh, we will certainly uh, hold that condemnation. You have to come into our legal department and work out a program with them and you'll have to put up a bond uh, that you are going to uh, to fix that house and you will have six months, I believe, to do that. So there's a process through this all, all this whole thing. Uh, so uh, what we'll do tonight is we'll vote if we condemn it, then you need to go to our city attorney's office, okay? And sit down with them and they will work out the, the particulars with you and tell you how much your bond has to be and you'll put up a bond, and if, if you do not do what you say you're going to, then you will forfeit that bond, and we'll use that bond to tear the building down. So that, that's the procedure, okay? And you know, our director is here. If you wanna catch him, uh, or if you wanna wait until tomorrow and, and go to legal, you're more than welcome to do either one. I'll do it as soon as possible, you know, Mr. Okay. Mayor, because sure. I need, I mean, I personally believe also that properties needs to be, should be taken care of. But there's a legal procedure, uh, Mr. Mayor, that they did not send me any notice at all. Knowing that I have the power of attorney that they should send me some documentation to at least talk about 
I will do whatever it needs to be done. I would be I would be willing to bet that they did the rules the right way because we do it too many I times. I can bet to you, uh, Mr. Mayor, I don't come here to uh, argue, you need, but I can show you. Okay, get with legal. Either. Get with legal tomorrow, and if we've done something wrong, we'll certainly fix it. I appreciate that. You bet. Thank you. You bet. Ms. Ross. I, ju I just want to uh, remind Mohammed that he has 30 days to get. Is it that correct right. on the rehab? So within 30 days, you need to get with legal. If, if this does pass, to do the rehab agreement, if you want to do the rehab agreement. Yeah, I'd, I'd start sense. tomorrow if I was you. Because it, you know, even, even though you have 30 days, you're gonna have to be visiting with someone that, in Seattle, Washington, wherever your daughter lives. Right. Okay. And I visited with Mr. Butte before the meeting and um, told him to um, get in contact with me and I would go over the procedure that he needs to do in order to um, get a rehab agreement for this property. Okay, thank you. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18190, <clears throat> Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located at 1901 East Washington Avenue in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, to constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing a period of time for the property owner to abate said <clears throat> nuisance. Move for adoption. Second. Call a public hearing, 1901. East Washington, anyone here to speak on that? Seeing none, close the public hearing on the motion. Frost? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18191, Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located at 400 East 21st Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas to constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing a period of time for property owner to abate said nuisance. Move for adoption. Second. Call the public hearing. Anyone here on, to speak on 400 East 21st Street? Seeing none, close the public hearing on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18192, Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution certifying the amount of a cleanup lien to be filed with the Pulaski County uh, Tax Collector against certain real property located at 1404 West Short 17th Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Move for adoption. Second. Call the public hearing 1404 West Short 17th. Anyone here? Seeing none, close the public hearing on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18193, Mayor Smith. Please call it. A resolution certifying the amount of a cleanup lien to be filed with the Pulaski County Tax Collector against certain real property located at 921 Rose Clare Drive in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Move for adoption. Second. Call the public hearing. Anybody here to speak on 921 Rose Clare Drive? Seeing none, close the public hearing on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18194, Mayor Smith. Please call it. A resolution certifying the amount of a cleanup lien to be filed with the Pulaski County Tax Collector against certain real property located at 3805 Freeman Circle in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Move for adoption. Second. Second. Call a public hearing. Anyone here to speak on uh, 3805 Freeman Circle? Seeing none, close the public hearing on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Winter? Yes. R18195, Mayor Smith. Please call it. A resolution certifying the amount of a cleanup lien to be filed with the Pulaski County Tax Collector against certain real property located at 1106 East 2nd Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Move for adoption. Second. Call a public hearing. Anyone here to speak on 1106 East 2nd? 1106 East 2nd. Seeing none, close the public hearing on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18196. Please Mayor call Smith. it. A resolution certifying the amount of a cleanup lien to be filed with the Pulaski County Tax Collector against certain real property located at 2105 White Street in the, in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. <coughs> Move for adoption. Second. Call the public hearing 2105 White Drive. Anyone here to speak on that? Seeing none, close the public hearing on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18197, Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution approving and certifying amounts of liens to be filed with the Pulaski County Tax Collector against certain real properties in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas as a result of grass cutting expenses and abatement of other nuisances. 
Move for adoption. Second. Anyone here? Call the public hearing. Speak on grass cutting expenses and abatement of other nuisances. Seeing none, close the public hearing on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. 01875, Mayor Smith? Please call it. An ordinance levying a tax on all real and personal property within the city of North Little Rock for the police pension and relief fund, the fire pension and relief fund, the municipal library fund, and the North Little Rock general fund declaring an emergency. Move, we, uh, move for uh, waive all readings. Motion to spend all readings on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Easy for y'all to say. Move for adoption. <laughs> Second. Second. On the motion. Can you? Yeah. Could you just explain real quick because I've had yeah, several I mean, it's, questions on We do on this, this every fall. It, it just sure. continues to put the this on our real estate taxes and um, uh, for the police and fire pension fund, municipal library, and the general fund. And I don't know if this is correct or not, but the only way that they wouldn't be put on it was to be voted out, basically, or whatever. And then right. if you've got debt against it, then it couldn't be voted out. That's right. like, okay. Right. Just make sure that everybody understands. On the motion, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. 01876, Mayor Smith? Please call it. An ordinance amending the 2008 quota ordinance, ordinance number 8980, for the North Little Rock District Court, First Division, Electric, and Legal Departments, declaring emergency, first reading. May it spin the readings? Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Move for adoption. Oh, second. Sorry, I was trying to read ahead. <laughs> on, on the motion. On the motion, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. 01877, Mayor Smith? Please call it. An ordinance granting a waiver of sections 12.15 and 15.14 of the zoning ordinance to allow the development of a transitory distribution facility on certain real property located at 1920 North Locust Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, declaring an emergency. First reading. Move this, uh, suspend the readings, and then can we talk about this just sure. for a second? Sure. Suspend all readings and a second. On the motion to suspend. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Yes. Ms. White? Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you. Um, I was just, one thing I wanted clarification of, and I, even though I read that it was in the legislation, is that if this became a permanent building, all this would have to be you know, redone, it wouldn't automatically apply to a, a permanent building. Is that correct, fine? Sean? Yes. yes. Absolutely. You know, we, we, this is a lot of moving parts on this, but uh, what a great opportunity it is that uh, uh, hopefully we can show uh, uh, Amazon just what a uh, corporate friendly city we are. Ms. Ross? I just kind of wanted to explain because I had some people ask me about this too. You know, we've talked to the Dark Hill neighbor neighborhood group at their meeting and everything but this is a waiver for you know what we normally would require of commercial property you know the the street trees the parking lot shade trees and these are things that we've waived on a temporary basis which we certainly hope that they make this permanent and it's they've got 24 months on this to do that so for amazon on the motion i don't think that there was a motion no, to we need adopt a yet okay how about a motion to adopt so so moved. Moved. second second on the motion ross yes white yes taylor Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. 01878, Mayor Smith? Please call it. An ordinance amending section 14.26.C. For the zoning ordinance, ordinance number 7697, to extend the time for owners to replace off-premises signs, declaring an emergency, first reading. But a motion to suspend and I'll, uh, we'll let. Move spin the readings. Second. Second. A motion to suspend all readings. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? 
Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And what's your? Yes. Council, you want? Okay. Um, the, um, Sean and I, um, Sean was approached by billboard owners and asked me to sit in with them. Um, it has been long in our ordinance that when a billboard owner removes the billboard, their permit for that billboard goes into a permit bank so that they can replace the billboard at a different location. The time limit on replacing the billboard um, was 30 days. Uh, the representatives of the billboard owners expressed concern um, because there are only very limited numbers of sites where billboards are allowed. Uh, they're only allowed in industrial zones. Um, there are distance restrictions both in the city ordinance and um, in the highway department um, regulations so that they were um, having difficulty in securing a new site to move the billboard and be able to use the permit within the 30 days um, and, and to lock up the either a long-term lease or whatever or to purchase the property. I think it's usually under a long-term lease. Um, and so um, they asked for an additional amount of time because with the 30 days, um, they were not able to utilize those permits. Sean and I talked to them and then I visited with the mayor and he agreed to sponsor the legislation um, to allow them time to relocate a billboard. Yeah, it made perfectly good sense to me. Ms. Ross? I said, well, how did, you know, it was 30 days, how did it come up with nine months? Because we either do, usually do six months or a year. Well, so where did the nine um, months come from? I suggested That's three months, they suggested a year, and we split the difference gotcha. with nine okay. months. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. On the motion. Uh, we need a motion to adopt. How about a motion to adopt? So move. Second. Only motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. 01879, Council Member Taylor? Please call it. An ordinance reclassifying certain property located at 124 Eureka Gardens Road in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, from R1 zoning classification to planned unit development PUD zoning cert, uh, classifications by amending ordinance number 7697, adopting an amended land use plan for the subject property, declaring an emergency. First reading. Move to suspend the readings. Second. I have a motion to suspend all readings on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. Yeah. And Witcher? Yes. Question? Question. What are we doing here? The, the property, it's, it's a grocery store. It's sitting in the middle of a residential area. Uh, the property uh, transferred to a new ownership. Planning suggested that they bring the, bring the um, zoning up to uh, current, uh, which would have been a um, commercial, and I think something happened on, on the, with the commercial zoning, so they went back and decided to do it, to make it a PUD, so that's where we are. Thank you. You agree with that, Sean? 100%. Okay. Do we have a motion to adopt? We need a motion to adopt. So move. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. 01880, Council Member Robinson? Please call it. An ordinance vacating and abandoning, abandoning an unused portion of a right-of-way located along the River Road Trail in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, declaring an emergency. First reading. Move to suspend the readings. Second. On the motion to suspend all readings. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. How about a motion? So move. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Winter? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? 
Yes. And Wood Chair. Yes. This concludes new business. Thank you very much. Let's go right into public comment. Uh, first is uh, Deanna Robinson. Hello, everyone. Some people know me from years back. I recently moved back from Houston, Texas, and I'm full of ideas and, you know, ready to go. Hit the floor. Okay. What I want to say is that I grew up in North Little Rock, enjoyed my stay here. I learned a lot of valuable lessons. Parents grew up here. My son grew up here. My son is now a recruiter. Anybody needs to be recruited to the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville, he's there available to help you. Okay. So I have a dream of a great city by the river with fairness for all. I would like to see the repurpose of the railroad depot where I grew up about a block away. I remember at the tail end of it, but I do know some history about it, that it was you know, a major depot early in 19, I think, 10 or so. But me and Mayor Hayes had that thing going because we both loved the railroad. But um, I would like to see that we get input from the neighborhood. There's not many people left in the neighborhood, but uh, I myself work with the Sherman Park CDC, and we were really adamant on getting repurposed. I recently understood that the purpose that it was meant for at this time was a daycare or something. That has not been, you know. Right, it didn't, it, well, I mean, it worked for a long time, but the, uh, the director has, is retiring this month, as a matter of right, fact. Right, and I'm okay. ready to take his position. Yeah. And I wanted to see a museum, as, a, as other railroad enthusiasts want, because I recently, like I said, moved from Houston. We have a couple of places in Houston, like it's up one in LaPorte, Texas, and it's very similar to this one, but it's not as old. And it's like used for educational purposes for the youth. But I think for the city on the whole, they would really make a really good impact with what's all going on. I'm excited about what's going on. I recently retired. I'm not in for volunteer. I'm in for a job, OK? Because <laughs> when I work, I work hard. So, um, But I do have a heart for the youth, because I think they need the education to know this is a great city. And what all I see that's going on now it's good. It's all good. Like I said, that's the only reason I moved back, because I wanted to make a difference in where I grew up, because I have choices. I re recently retired from the a great airline, Southwest, <laughs> get the plug. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I just really want to see this really, you know, impact the city, too, because I think a lot of people are interested in the railroad, because the railroad had a very big impact on this city. So if anyone can, you know, see through, I guess, all whatever the ideas they have, that railroad was worth putting money into years ago to save. I think it's worth putting some money into it again and getting grant money to repurpose it as a museum. And I know it's the railroad people are interested in doing it also. So if anybody want to jump on board, I'm ready. We can get on board and get this thing going. I love your energy. We'd like, we'd like to hear the ideas. That's a good old building. We'd like to try to save it with a good program. Thank you. Thank you. Bobby Taylor. Bobby, I'm sorry. Did I say not? Did I not say Bobby Taylor? Yes, you did. Bobby Taylor, give me the stare down. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. My name is Bobby Taylor. Mayor went back to court Thursday. The judge asked me how it was, and I said it's good today and bad tomorrow. That's, he just shook his head, and he looked at Billy, told him. After I showed him his picture and the code showed him their pictures, he said, you can't do this. Now, I don't know where, where this is going to, but I'm not fixing to let up on it. What did the judge say? Huh? What did the judge say? The, the judge told him, asked him if he had a lawnmower. He said, yes. He said, you have a weed eater? He said, yes. He said, I suggest you use it. That was basically the end of it, but he said that it may go to a higher court. May go to a higher court. Okay, well, I'll get briefed on it tomorrow and find out. And he said he had to, he may have to testify to me. So I have a question. How, how This has been going on for almost four years. We'll be in December. How long did y'all's dad tell you you couldn't do something before you found out what the penalty was? 
and you learn different? That's what puzzles me. Why something can't be done for justice? Mary, I know you're trying, and I appreciate you. If you want to know anything else, you can ask this lady right here. She was there. And I'll see you in two weeks. Okay, Bobby, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Karen, see me before you leave. Uh, any council members have anything to go to the order? Ms. Ross? Uh, National Night Out, we've got our flyer here. Tuesday, yep. October the 2nd. Check your neighborhoods, or we can name the, we, you know, if Caitlin wanted to read these off real quick of all the different events going on, but. If you got them, go ahead. Yeah, we'll let Caitlin, she has a much better reading One voice moment. there. Here, I got them. Uh, Ward one, Military Heights Outreach Association, three to six. Holt Neighborhood, uh, this is on the second. 4.30 to 6.30 at 18th and Share. Levy Business Association at Levy Baptist Church, 5.30 till eight. Park Hill Neighborhood Association at Idlewild Park. That's always a good one, 6 to 7.30. Military, I mean, these are all a lot of fun. Uh, Ward 2, Sherman Park Neighborhood Association, 7th Street Elementary School, 4 to 8. Meta Park Neighborhood Association, 5 to 7. Rose City Neighborhood Association, 5 to 7. Meta Park's at the elementary school. Uh, Rose City's at uh, School Street Neighborhood Park. Dixie Edition um, is uh, 5 to 9 at 900 block of uh, North H. Um, St. Augustine Catholic Church, uh, 6 to 8 at 1421 East 2nd. Glenview Neighborhood Association, 6 to 830. Uh, and that is going to be at Glenview Boulevard. That's a, always a lot of fun. Uh, Faulkner Crossing Property Owner Association, 6 to 8 at the Stone Links Clubhouse. Ward three, Amboy Neighborhood Association at the Amboy Methodist Church, 6 to 7.30. Levy ba Business Association, 5.30 to 8 at the Levy Baptist Church. And Saturday, October the 6th, uh, Melrose Community Outreach at Melrose Park. So try to get involved in your community. We'd certainly appreciate that. Uh, I have one special announcement. To, uh, let everybody know just how uh, important some of our council members are, but uh, uh, Steve Baxter Wednesday is going to be promoted to uh, Chief Master Sergeant, Ooh. and um, that is one big dog. I'm telling you that that's who runs the Air Force. Uh, and it's not the generals; it's the Master Sergeant. So, uh, congratulations, Council Member. Absolutely, <laughs> we're really really proud of the job you do protecting our country. I sleep better at night knowing that you're doing that. So, anybody else? How about a motion? Mayor, yes. will you make a reminder that the November 12th meeting will be held on the 13th due to Yeah, veterans? I guess we kind of need a voice vote on that. Uh, the November the 11th, November the 12th is Veterans Day, and that's a Monday, and the city is off that day, so uh, it's okay with me to move it to the 13th, if that's okay with everybody else. <coughs> um, anybody, any opposition? Ms. Ross? Everybody will be back from the National League of Cities, the ones that are going I mean, it's, yes. I mean, it's that following yes. week, but I, yeah. okay, make sure it's yeah. back. Um, okay, consider that done. We had no opposition. Okay. okay, on the motion. On the motion, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes.